Now the floor to the last speech of this uh, first part on vision and focus. This is, is going to be a different kind of speech. It's uh, in connection with an expert, but it will be a question and answer. There will be an interviewer, and our guest will answer. So we'll give the floor now to the person who will be in charge of questions. You saw her this morning. It's Giulia Eremita from BTO 2021. Giulia, please join us. We have an international guest. Let's see who it is. Let's have it, the music. Harriet Green, Global B. Harriet Green, Global Business Leader, harrietgreen.com. Wonderful title for this intervention. Looks like the title of a poem, of a song, of a film. Travel through the vortex of change. We believe Ariet is the most suitable to answer these, these questions because she lived in five continents and also has been working for one of the largest world tour operator. Ariet, Ariet, you're connected. Thank so you happy so to have much. you here. Yeah, so it's not going to be an interview. Uh, Harriet will speak for about 10 minutes. Um, she has a lot to tell us about uh, the change through uh, tourism is going, um, and also this vortex, as you say, uh, okay. what it means. And then I'm going to ask something to Harriet as well. Perfect. Please, I Harriet. I to sit down, yeah, and I will too, hear <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much. And. Uh, as already said, my name is Harriet Green. I'm a businesswoman who's worked and lived on four continents in five different industries, including travel, hospitality, tech, and supply chain. And you may know my name from driving the mobile digitization, the refunding, the resurgence, and the rebranding of Thomas Cook between 2012 and 2015. And I was also the CEO and chairman of IBM across Asia PAC, taking frictionless uh, uh, technology to thousands of, of, of clients. So I was asked to talk to you today about travel through the vortex of change, what it is, what it means, innovation led growth. Uh, and a few of my simple predictions. And I was asked to do this in uh, sort of 15 minutes. Um, and then, as already said, open up for Q&A about transformation, tech, Thomas Cook, whatever is on your mind. So first of all, what is this vortex of change? I think there are four major forces that we are having to deal with right now. Climate, tech, health, and deep, deep inclusion. Everything is different. Nothing is the same. You take nothing else from what I share with you. Uh, that in the margins of your page is very important. Everything is different. Nothing is the same. From a technology perspective, we have uh, announced two weeks ago quantum compute on the desktop. Many of the great speakers have referred to AI. I'm going to talk a little bit about metaverse, reality, uh, and the uh, future state. We have synthetic biology, autonomous robots, and off-planet missions, which I personally think is a great travel opportunity. So what does this mean, in essence, for all of us? I think that we have learned to work from our kitchen table, uh, we've led from our bedrooms, uh, and we've supported you know, from afar, but we haven't been able to travel. And now, as many speakers have discussed, we need to confront deep uncertainty to really quickly adapt and thrive 
in this industry. And many people have asked me, why is this so important? Why are you still so focused on the importance of travel and hospitality to humankind? And I would like to share a quote, if I may, from the great man himself from June 1854, when Thomas Cook said, travel provides food for the mind. It contributes to the strength and the enjoyment of the intellect. It helps to pull men out of the mire and pollution of old corrupt practices. It promotes a feeling of universal brotherhood. It accelerates the march of peace of virtue and love, and it also contributes to the health of the body by a relaxation from the toil and the invigoration of the physical powers. So what we are talking about here at this event, the importance at which we make changes in the travel industry is because this goes to the core of human beings and our next phase and our next step. Now, every single crisis, serious crisis over the last hundred years, how we have um, emerged from that crisis has been through the release of extraordinary innovation. After a terrible start to the 1900s and in the 1920s, it was really electronic power transmission, consumer goods like fridges that began to get growth back into the world. In the 50s, after a pandemic, uh, after again, another extraordinary war, an entire new category was created by Sony in the transistor uh, radio. In the midst of the gloom in the 70s, Microsoft was born. And in 2020, as the dot-com bubble burst, uh, Apple launched its first new product, the iPad. So innovation, and as many of the speakers before me have said, fast innovation is very, very important for travel. I know from running Thomas Cook that everyone wants to resort to what they know in providing great memories and great experiences. But digitization and frictionless travel is already well established. There are some amazing uh, true mobile front ends that we all see, uh, including uh, virtual reality, which I actually launched in the Thomas Cook stores, the new stores in 2013 in Essex in the UK. And I wanna come back to that in terms of my predictions. There's also been considerable work to streamline the back end between hotels and flights and cars. And a number of speakers have talked to the challenges because it is so hard to fill all of the roles in hotels, in hospitality venues at this time. And so the point of human interface is an extraordinary place uh, for digital products. AI chatbot, uh, concierge, we launched in IBM uh, uh, concierges, totally digital in Boston hotels in 2016 which managed the whole external environment with enough knowledge to write a book about Boston, as well as the in-room experience, you know, temperature control, lighting, et cetera. Now I have just returned from a number of months of travel, September, October, November, traveling throughout Asia, across Singapore, Thailand, and the surrounding islands. And unlike many of the speakers, I am incredibly positive. I would pull out the extraordinary leap in health and safety on airlines. Um, 
Of course, I traveled with my favorite and perhaps one of the best airlines, Singapore Airlines, but many airlines completely upped their health and safety protocols as some of the speakers have talked to. Airport efficiency, the marshalling, the cleanliness, still no shopping in Singapore, which breaks my heart, but there is shopping in Phuket uh, and brilliantly initiated schemes like sandbox, very efficient, fast mechanisms to get people tested and on to their vacations in many of the Thai provinces. And the connection with health digitization and tech is high quality, still a little high cost for my liking, but whether it's at AT genes testing centers across Thailand, or indeed in early September when I was in France, uh, all of this linked to passports, 24 hour results. I have seen extraordinary examples of joined up digitization with infrastructure, hotels, uh, um, and the local community. And my best example, on November the 2nd, I got off a 13 and a half hour flight at Terminal 2 at 8.15 a.m. in the morning. And 17 minutes later, 17, I collected my bag at Terminal 2, carousel number six, after a seamless automated immigration health checks linked to passports. So I am very upbeat about how the industry is moving at pace. And I would make a couple of predictions in terms of what will be the next level of acceleration. Number one, I think the whole try before you buy is becoming a much bigger reality uh, uh, in travel and will dramatically improve conversion rates in the funnel as our prior speaker do with her amazing uh, data. When we launched our virtual reality headsets, Oculus Rift, in the stores at Thomas Cook in 2013, we had 100% conversion. Those hotels and resorts that we were able to um, load all of the data, organize the data, give real-time information, were booked and booked every time. Secondly, in terms of metaverse and the virtual environment, and a number of professors have talked to this, I believe it will expand the travel market hugely. People that travel as virtual tourists will commonly want to visit the places that have inspired them. This we are beginning to see, and this I believe will continue. Business travel will reduce, I think, dramatically, um, but the metaverse teams will allow really powerful interaction in a meeting construct that I think the travel industry should become a part of. And I think that Apple's metaverse app store uh, combined with its uh, uh, glasses will dominate and push Apple's uh, valuation to probably, you know, over $4 trillion. So we really are traveling through an amazing vortex of change. As I shared with you, you should remember everything is different and nothing is the same. And I would recommend that all of you follow, uh, uh, do not follow the path uh, um, that may lead, you know, where everyone else goes. Instead, go where there is no path and leave a trail. Go digitize, go build digital products, prepare for this boom in frictionless travel. Choose good partners, Fail fast, involve your employees, and of course, your customers. And I, for one, um, I'm not the same, you know, having seen the, the moon shine on the other side of the world, 
Herod. what travel is really about, nothing is the same. So thank you very much for listening. Thanks, Harry. Thanks a lot. Time is over. Unfortunately, my, my, <laughs> my task is to interrupt the best speaker today. I have such a bad uh, role today. So you say that nothing will be the, the same. And I have two questions for you. So one is about the business travel. No? You say the metaverse and the augmented reality and the virtual reality will be an, um, a plus for people to meet, not in call, but it's going to be a plus. So what do, you, what do you think, what do you forecast about business travel? Will be back as usual or we just should forget about that? It's a great question. You can uh, check me out on LinkedIn. I wrote a whole piece about business travel. The data came from McKinsey. But I think there will be four groups. I won't talk about all four. There are those who will continue to travel just as before. But I think the combination of the world having changed and much more deference to climate change. Uh, uh, travel, business travel for business travel sense will change. So we'll need to find better ways than VC and using metaverse and virtual environments to explore a community. It still means you can host a, a meeting on Lama Island uh, virtually, which will if you like, build backlog for the future when people want to visit Lama Island for free. So I think people should start to explore, understand, see the rules, buy the glasses, and think about the power of virtual reality. Great, great. Um, another question. You work for one of the oldest tour operators on a large scale, uh, Thomas Cook, uh, who worked happily and honorably for 178 years. So you were leading this, this group uh, some years ago. 2019, uh, unfortunately, the tour, this tour operator failed. And we were here a bit you asking ourselves, um, is this just the case or is it just because this traditional way of selling trips doesn't work any longer. And actually, we thought of you <laughs> to talk about you, but that time was, was not easy to reach you. Uh, so now that you are uh, on your own, uh, what's your take on uh, tour operating in the future? So first of all, I, I have two um, all my comments are positive, but there are two very positive comments and two must change comments. The positive comments is I think that bundling together really effectively and digitally uh, planes, hotels, stays, trips, and the whole uh, package tour has proven to be extremely resilient. It's better value for clients. It took uh, consumers a while to realize that doing it all yourself and not being protected was expensive and cumbersome. So I am a massive believer in the package tour. I think secondly, um, the um, reach, accessibility for um, everyday folks to take a vacation, to follow that wonderful quote from Thomas Cook is done wonderfully all over the uh, world cost-effectively by great tour operators. I think the two words of warning are the world of heavy, heavy assets, owning your own hotels, owning your own planes has proven to be a very challenging economic model. So mixing your balance sheet to ensure that you have assets that are not just fixed, that you have capabilities uh, that are leading uh, and pioneering is important because the travel industry was slow, really slow to move to brilliant innovation. And what this vortex of change has told me is the travel industry is perfectly capable of leapfrogging and, as I said, uh, creating amazing digital products that can replace people because we can't get enough people, choose good partners, fail fast, involve employees, and of course your clients. 
But unless you are innovating in a digital sense to take advantage of some of these new themes, you will be left behind and it will be painful. Thanks, Harriet. Thanks a lot. Um, today we had also Alpitour, a big uh, Italian tour operator, and there was uh, actually also their point of view to guarantee with technology the maximum flexibility and, and to, to keep on innovating and be faster and quicker in changing, no? Because travel yeah. is resilient, but it's also true that it's one of the industry which takes a bit no? to, to innovate, especially when in, in this pandemic time, they didn't have the fuel to do that. There was not enough money, unfortunately. Thanks a lot for joining us virtually and, and see you next time. Thank you. You bet. Thank you.